I tell you the truth. It is expedient. That word expedient there means worthwhile or beneficial. So Jesus saying, listen, it is beneficial for you that I go away. Why, Lord? For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And if you don't know who the comforter is yet, which we know he's going to tell us, it is the Holy Ghost. But he says, listen, eat up Mondays. Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Listen, I pray that you guys had a great and an awesome weekend. I just want to say thank you for being here on today, whatever day you are watching this, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the month after, week after. I just want to say thank you for being here to share this meal with me. Listen, I'm not going to talk over the food. Um, I just want to jump right into this meal with you guys. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Listen, this past week, uh, or last week, I should say, on Wednesday, we had Bible study at the church, and I had an opportunity uh, to teach Bible study last Wednesday, and I was talking to the congregation about some of the benefits of of the Holy Spirit. And it came from, it was inspired by a conversation that I had with my wife the night before. And it, and I really felt my spirit, you know, to kind of talk about this and share it. And, and I'm feeling the same way um, here on this Monday. And one of the things I said to my wife was, I said, man, for us to have God residing in us through his spirit, you know, a lot of times we don't, you know, use that to our benefit, right? We, you know, it's almost like sometimes we have to be reminded of that God lives in us and that his Holy Spirit was given to us for a purpose. And I was sharing with her, I remember years ago, God saying to me, listen, you know, for me to reside in you through my spirit, you're not enjoying me enough, right? Like you're, you're not tapping into the benefits of me, you know, living inside of you, right? And a lot of times we have to be reminded of that because you know, when we go through certain situations, when stuff happens in our life, sometimes we reach for this or we look for that or we call this person, you know, forgetting that we have God residing in us, right? Who better to talk to and to bring it to first and foremost than the Lord? So, you know, we were talking about some of the benefits, some of the gifts, and I won't go over those for the sake of time because it was an hour long Bible study, but just to give you some scriptures for homework that you can go over. Um, you know, the Bible talks about the spiritual gifts, right? And that's 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 1 through 11, where it talks about the gifts that we receive through the Holy Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 to 24, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit, right? And how many know when you have the fruits of the Spirit, that's the infilling of the Holy Ghost, right? That's a filling of the Holy Ghost as well, because a lot of times when you hear people talk about being filled with the Holy Ghost, they often refer to tongues, um, um, you know, that's like their major go to. But there are situations in the Bible, Acts chapter four, where the Bible says that, you know, uh, uh, Peter was filled and he spoke with boldness. It talked about how the disciples, they, the apostles, they prayed with some of the other disciples in that same chapter. Right. You know, for the filling of the spirit so that they could speak with boldness. Right. But how many know we can be filled with the spirit at all times, as long as we're staying in this word and we're staying prayed for prayed up. We're constantly pouring into that spirit, right? We're constantly being in the state where God can continually fill us, right? And that's why it's important on what we put in our spirit or what we allow to, to, to be, you know, how can I say deposited in our spirit, the information that we're taking in. So, you know, Galatians 5, 22 through 24 talks about the fruits of the spirit. And I wanted to just read something to you guys really quickly, John chapter 15. And I want to just, you know, show you what Jesus said to them about a couple of things and then what he said to them about the spirit, because there's one benefit that I really wanted to touch on. And I touched on it a little bit already, but I just wanted to read through these scriptures with you guys. And as John was starting the uh, 15th chapter at the 18th verse, and it reads as follows. It says, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. This is very key what Jesus is saying. He says, listen, if you was of the world, the world would love you, right? So we need to stop 
you know, being discouraged when, you know, we feel like we're not fitting in. We feel like, you know, people that that are not saved, they don't really want to deal with us because of our beliefs and things of that nature. Listen, it's all a part of the walk, right? But listen to what Jesus says. He says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world. And that's a blessing, right? But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hate of you. So he's letting them know, listen, this is why they don't like you. It's because I've chosen you out of the world. You are not a part of the world. And that's a blessing because those that abide in Christ shall live forever. But those that abide in the world or that are attached to the world, guess what? The scripture tells us in 1 John that we are going to die with the world, right? But it goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, this is key, they will also persecute you. If ye kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So he says, listen, if you keep my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for this, for their sin. So Jesus says, listen, because I've come and I've spoken to them, I pulled the covers off of them. I shed a light onto their sin. There's no more hiding behind that cloak that they once had. Everything is out in the open. There's no way around it. Sin is sin. You can't act like you don't understand what it is that you're ignorant to it. No, the the Lord has spoken. His word is here and it is here to reprove, right? Sin, to to to, to shed light uh, in dark places. But I'm going to read on. It says, he that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. Listen to this. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled as it is written, that it is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is, when the comforter is coming, this is where we want to get to. But I wanted to share that for you to have some understanding of what it is that you're going through here in this world. You know, stop trying to be buddy buddy with people that don't want to receive you because of your beliefs, because of your stance in Christ. It's okay. You don't have to be mad with them. Still pray for them. You don't even have to like not speak to them and all that. Do all of those things, but don't be discouraged because they're not receiving you, because they're not hearing the things that you're talking to them about about the Lord. He says, listen, if it's somebody that has kept, if you kept his saying and there's somebody um, that is tapped in as well, they're going to keep your sayings. But those that are in the world, they only love their own. And the last thing they want to do is hear about what it is that they need to be doing through the word of God. And that's why he says, listen, they hated him without a cause. But what he came speaking was something that was going to be a blessing for them, right? That was going to free them. But because they didn't want to hear it, they hated them. And that's what happens with us, right? When we try to share our experiences, our testimonies, what God has done for us, guess what? They don't want to hear it. And uh, and, and sometimes uh, eventually they'll hate you for that, right? But he says, but when the comforter is coming, this is what we really wanted to get to. He says, whom I will send unto you from my father or from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. Another very key point here. They shall put you out of the synagogue, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. So let's stop right there for a second. He says, listen, I'm telling you this, not so that you could be offended, you know, but that you should know the truth, right? So when these things start happening and we're seeing it, if you live in the United States, people are being persecuted to the point of physicalness now, right? I shared with the church recently, I just saw a story online and I forgot where it was, where a pastor was witnessing sitting on the corner and got shot in the head. You know, I don't even know if they still really understand or know who shot him, how he got shot, but they did say that there were some people that was yelling at him and things of that nature, but they haven't confirmed if it were them. But just to go and show you that, listen, these are the things that are happening. And this is why Jesus was letting them know, like, listen, they're going to, there's going to be a time where they're going to kill you and they're going to call themselves doing my work, but they're not doing my work. They're killing you because you don't belong to them 
but because you belong to me. But he says he that, you know, whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So they're going to think that they're doing it for God. But he said they don't even know me. Right. And that's why they doing it to you, because they don't recognize you. They don't know you because you don't belong to who they belong to. Their father is the devil. Right. Their father is Satan. If their father had been the Lord, then they would not have done that to you. So they don't know the father or the Lord. Amen. And it goes on to say, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things, listen what Jesus said, unto you sorrow have filled your heart. Nevertheless, even though you got that sorrow, he said, even though they had that sorrow, nevertheless, that word means however. I tell you the truth, it is expedient. That word expedient there means worthwhile or beneficial. So Jesus saying, listen, it is beneficial for you that I go away. Why Lord? For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And if you don't know who the comforter is yet, which we know he's going to tell us, it is the Holy Ghost. But he says, listen, it is worthwhile to you. It is beneficial to you that I go away so that you can have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit could be sent back to you. And he's going to tell us why. He says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. That word reprove means to criticize or correct, to reprimand. So it goes to show that if we have the Holy Spirit, right, we're not condoning sin, right? We're going to be reprimanding it. We're going to be correcting it and not in a way as to say, oh, you're doing that and you're going to hell, but get putting the truth on it that if you don't stop that, right? Or that, listen, that could be detrimental to your, to your physical life as well as your spiritual life, right? This is what the Holy Spirit does. So when you have the Holy Spirit and you're not willing to condone sin, that's a great thing because that's what the Spirit of God does, right? He says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not in me. And that's powerful, right? He says of sin. And, and one of the major reasons is because they believe not in me. And it makes sense of why, you know, people are constantly bucking. And, and that's why I say you can't get discouraged. All you can do is share your testimony, share what God did for you, share what God did for the whole entire world by sending his only begotten son. That's all you can do. But if they fight against that, that's out of your hands. That's not your problem. That's, that's all up to God on what he's going to do with that. We just got to play our part, say what it is that God tells us to say, amen. But he says of sin, because they believe not on me of righteousness, because I go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment, because the prince of the world or of this world is judged. And we know that he's talking about Satan, right? He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but she cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in all truth. And this is what I really, really wanted to get to. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the father have are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. And one of the greatest benefits that we have by having the Holy Spirit is the opportunity to speak to God and get guidance and get direction. Know the things that are to come. Understand the things that he reveals to us that's going on in our lives. This is a super great benefit for us to have, but sometimes we don't utilize it, right? Sometimes things happen. And the last thing we think about is just being quiet, going in our, in a little space, talking to God, praying, taking time to hear what it is that he has to say. But a lot of times we just focus on what's going on around us, what this person is saying, what IT is saying, what the internet is saying, what the new TikTok thing is saying. And it's like, no, we have to use the benefit that God gave us by having the Holy Spirit to be taught. And another scripture in John chapter 14, he said the Holy Spirit will teach us all things, right? Uh, uh, and later on in, in the uh, epistle of John, he says, listen, you don't even really need to be taught by man because the spirit can teach you all things. 
if you really tap in, right? You don't hear that much, but that's what he said. Like, this is how important the Holy Spirit is to us. This is our guidance. This is our way to get home, right? But a lot of times we're not utilizing it. We're not taking advantage of it. One more scripture I want to read, um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And this is some of our favorite, um, some of our, you know, um, those of us that that know the word and been saved for a while, we love to quote the scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But the question is, are we, are we applying it, right? He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And here it is, and lean not unto thine own understanding. That word lean there means to rely on or to rely upon. He says, listen, don't rely on your own understanding. He says, in all thy ways, that word ways there means in all your paths of life. In on all your courses of action, he says, acknowledge him and he shall, he will direct your paths. That word acknowledge there means to to recognize the authority of. We got to recognize who's in authority. We got to recognize that God is the top authority, right? Not some days when things are going good, but every single day, even when things are going bad, even though things are going the way that we didn't expect, he is still in control. He is still, you know, he is still in, in authority, right? He is still our authority. He is still our Lord and Savior. That it was the same last week. It's the same this week. It doesn't change. But sometimes we have to be reminded of this because sometimes we'll go through something and we'll act like God isn't who he was last week. We'll act like God didn't bring us out of the things he brought us out of in the past. I shared a testimony and I won't share it now with with, with the church um, on Wednesday night Bible study about how God healed my mind and some of the things he did when I was in that two year fog, when I had lost my mind smoking PCP. Uh, I'm going to share that in its, in its own in, 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 uh, video, you know, because it's, it's a real super powerful and important story. But think about it. If God gave me my natural mind back, that was gone. It was mush. It was over for me. If he gave me that back to be able to minister the gospel, to be able to tell my testimony, to be able to talk to people all over the world and in different parts of the city, my children, family members, how much more will he continue to take care of me and help me to get through the things that I feel are most difficult in my life. But a lot of times we need to be reminded of that, right? We need to get to the point where it's automatic that when something happens, we immediately, God, what do I do here? What do you say here? But he says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And it's a promise and he shall, he will direct thy paths. And that word direct there means to keep straight because guess what? God don't want you to get off his path, right? He don't want to, he don't want you to get off the path that he has you on. So he wants to keep you straight. But sometimes we're going to see roads that lead different ways and they're going to look enticing. There's going to be signs on them that sound like, listen, that should be the way that I'm going. But if we don't acknowledge God to ask him, is that the way? Guess what? We'll get off the path. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Go check out those scriptures. A couple other scriptures I want you to check out. First Corinthians uh, chapter two, verses one through 15. Also read John chapter 14 and this entirety, Romans eight and nine. I want you guys to go and check out all these scriptures because it will show you, you know, how beneficial it is that we have the Holy Spirit and the different things that we could tap into. But know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.